Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. I'm not sure if people watched to hear Billy Graham preach or to hear George Beverly Shea sing. You might remember those Billy Graham crusades that used to be on TV. We'd watch as Billy Graham would preach to a football stadium full of people. I even remember him coming to williams Bryce Stadium here in Columbia one time. Toward the end, He'd give an invitation to those who wanted to give their lives to Christ to come forward. And we'd watch as the aisles were filled with people who would come forward and someone would pray with them. That's how the sermon ended. But the lead up to the sermon was also important. And almost always it involved some singing by George Beverly Shea. Often the song he would sing was, How Great Thou Art. This week and next week, we are looking together at some hymns that come from what we might call the Baptist tradition. Our musician here at Redeemer will tell you that congregations have different songs they know and sing, and that's true of different traditions and denominations as well. Some of the hymns, however, creep over and are put in more general use. That's true of the hymn we will look at today, How Great Thou Art. In truth, it's not just George Beverly Shea who sang it. I've heard it on recordings of several different performers, including even Elvis. It's a well-loved song, one we make use of often. The origins of How Great Thou Art trace back to the summer of 1885 in Sweden when Carl Boberg was returning home one summer evening and was struck by the beauty of nature around him and the ringing of some church bells nearby. As the bells tolled, he was inspired to write a hymn extolling God and celebrating and praising God for the wonders of creation and God's goodness. Now, frankly, the text and tune have gone through numerous edits and changes over the years so that there are only a few phrases now that you will tr can still trace back to Boberg's original hymn. But maybe you've never noticed just how much how great thou art speaks of nature and of finding God in nature, especially in the first two verses. O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. When through the woods and forest glades I wonder, I hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze. As we sing, we are invited to find God around us in so many ways that we normally take for granted. Those verses are probably closest to what Boberg first wrote and his original intent for the hymn. But over time, some other verses have been added as well, first speaking of the wonder of God's love and grace in sending Jesus to save us. But when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in, that on the cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. And the final verse then moves to speak of God's final victory when all creation will be united with God for all time. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. And, of course, interspersed through this whole hymn is the glorious refrain, praising God's greatness for all God is and all God gives. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. In the end, the song invites us to let our lives burst forth in praise of God with all we are. Thanks for watching, and remember to let this day belong to God.